I'm Mei Wong here in northern Thailand, where many have crossed over from Myanmar over there into Thailand here to seek refuge. Myanmar citizens have been crossing over into Thailand here for decades, fleeing from a country that's been plagued by military coups and ethnic armed conflicts for some 70 years. The U.S. has recently resumed its program of taking in some of these Myanmar refugees. That resettlement program has brought renewed hope to the Myanmar refugees. But how many of them may be disappointed if deemed ineligible, or will they finally be able to make it to the land of the free? This refugee camp is the only home Daisy and Jasmine have ever known. Born here, these two girls are not allowed outside the camp because they have no papers. Their parents have been living in the refugee camp for 20 years. Gamweka and Sa'e had fled Myanmar because of the fighting between ethnic armed groups and the Myanmar military in Karen state. Such conflicts were happening way before the latest coup in February 2021. Over the past four decades, Thailand has been hosting some 90,000 refugees in nine camps. The U.S. recently announced plans to allow selected Myanmar refugees to be resettled there. The family is ready and eager to leave the camp upon hearing the news. I want to go home. I can't eat, I can't sleep because I'm so happy about that. And this is my dream, to go to the U.S. Uh, with them, my family. Kamuika is still waiting to find out if her family will be selected. But the 32-year-old is already looking forward to being able to give her daughters what she didn't have. I have to give that education. I can make them like a doctor and nurse and lawyer. I want they will be cut like that. If we have a national like the U.S., I think that they make uh, they can make it themselves for their dream. If, if, if they grow up, surely they will have a hope. He will have a dream. I think they, if they want to do something, they can do. Because me, I am here, I want to, but I can't. Getting out of this refugee and poverty cycle is what many families in the camps are longing for. Today, one refugee is given a mere 300 baht a month by international aid agencies. That's only nine US dollars. And they can't supplement that by working as they're not allowed to seek employment outside of the camp. It's like a prison. So you grew, you, you born there, you grew up there, you just have access to education in the camps and no one recognized uh, this kind of education. So it's a hard life. So people are, hope that uh, they will be able to leave the camp, you know, have a normal life and enjoy a life just like other people. Another family is also hoping to realize their dreams in the U.S. 53-year-old Ray Tu has been living in the camp with his family for almost 20 years. He may look like he has already settled well in the camp, running his own grocery shop. But this is far from a life he wants permanently. The fortunate refugees get to find a new lease of life outside in a third country. The others who remain behind continue to hold out hope that one day they too will be able to have a better life and to enjoy newfound freedom outside these restrictive camps.
But the thought of moving halfway across the world doesn't appeal to everyone here. 76-year-old Ta Sein has been living in the refugee camp since it was first set up some 40 years ago. In that time, she's seen Myanmar get engulfed again and again in violence. In the time that she's been here, she's become a grandmother to eight children from four to 14 years old. Ironically, Ta Sein actually has a chance of being selected for resettlement as she meets the criteria set by the authorities. Those who have registered with the authorities and have been living in the camps for at least four years are eligible. That automatically disqualifies the flood of new refugees who fled to Thailand after the 2021 military coup in Myanmar. A disappointment for this family of three, which came last November. The father, whose identity cannot be revealed to protect his personal safety, was detained by the military during the coup. They're here on the run without legal documents, which makes life here difficult as well. นาบิโอเลดิมาก็นี่ล่ะล่ะจ่าได้ชิงเอาตัวมิตาสุริอ่ะคาลีจ่ายเองสิทธิ์ได้ดีเลยจ่ายเองสิทธิ์ได้ด
This sports field just north of Austin, Texas, would seem to have little in common with Eastern Myanmar. But the languages spoken here, the food, the people, almost all have roots in Myanmar's Kain state, which some still refer to by its former name, Karen. Most of the people here left Myanmar a long time ago, coming here after spending years in Thailand. So I originally from Northern Thailand in a refugee camps, Karenni refugee camps, but my, my parents immigrated from Myanmar. Well, actually, there was a program in Thailand. They let us choose like which state we want to live in. So we just basically choose uh, Texas without knowing anything about Texas. Help, help, help. Claiming asylum became easier under George W. Bush's presidency, which began in 2000, when relations between the U.S. and the Myanmar government, which Washington still refers to as Burmese, deteriorated even further. That actually gave um, Condoleezza Rice, who, who was his secretary of state at the time, this opportunity to say, oh, well, if, if we're you know, determining that the Burmese government is on a scale with North Korea as a problem, then clearly these people who have fled persecution by this military government um, should be deserving of refugee status. LR2 was one of those who came to the U.S. around 2009 with his parents and six siblings. We met at a Thai restaurant south of Austin that one of his brothers bought a year ago and is staffed by family members. His journey took him from Thailand's Tom Hin refugee camp, where he'd barely seen a building with electricity, straight into a U.S. public school at age 11, speaking no English when he arrived. Absolutely. You know, I remember when I came here when I was younger, you know, I was bullied because I was different, you know. But things got better. He graduated from high school and then college. He now works as a police officer in Austin. Others in his family have also been able to overcome the challenging circumstances. So we came a long way from he come here as a refugee to now. You know, we're able to like set our feet down and now my brothers are like, you know, started their own business. They have, my brother have, you know, his own restaurant. And two of my younger brother are now going to like a university. They may be on the other side of the world now, but the ongoing crisis in Myanmar is never far from the minds of the community here. Since the military retook power in Myanmar during the coup in 2021, there has been an escalation of violence in the country, including in Kain State. That has increased concern here as well. Many who came to the U.S. as refugees still have family in the country or across the border in the camps in Thailand. <laughs> A number of those who sought asylum in the U.S. are Christian, and churches like this are important community gathering places. Here, there are efforts to raise funds and awareness about what's been happening in Myanmar. Groups in Kain State have been fighting the government almost continually for decades, but the crackdown since the coup has been brutal, with reports of civilians and even children being targeted. It is almost impossible to imagine that the people of Myanmar can endure more suffering. Yet the country continues its deadly freefall into even deeper violence and heartbreak. LR2 and his family speak to their family in Myanmar on Facebook at least once a month. They are very worried by what they are hearing. My mom always talk about life. Hey, you know, we still have family member over there and it's, it's very hard to connect with them when they had to, you know, flee into the jungle and there's no like uh, sort of like communication between us and them. So absolutely, man, because, you know, you have, you know, the dic dictatorship in Burma, you know, they bombing villages with uh, airplane and stuff and you just have kids 
you know, dying and stuff. I is just very concerning. Some have family who want to join them here, but are prevented from doing so. The situation is really rough. I, I myself still have family in, in Thailand. They, they really wanted to come, but uh, I believe it's temporary, but they're not allowed to come anymore. NGOs in Thailand say the Thai government has not allowed refugees from Myanmar to leave the country, even if they've been granted asylum in the U.S. Full of trauma. Diane Michke has worked with refugees from Myanmar since 2007 and runs a weekly volunteer health clinic in Dallas, Texas. She says the stress that refugees are under can be overwhelming, and that continues even after they get resettled. For those without English language skills or other formal training, the initial transition is difficult. Many refugees are, are employed in very low level um, jobs that require, you know, standing on your feet for a 12 hour shift, packing or cutting meat, um, things like that. <laughs> Starting a new life here in an alien land isn't easy. The older generation try hard to teach the children their languages and customs and give them the tools to have success in the future. A future that, for now, is likely to be here in Texas or somewhere else, just not Myanmar, where the crisis continues to rage on. bright with hope, heads full of ideas, and enthusiasm to learn everything under the sun. Here children from a Rohingya colony just outside India's capital New Delhi pour over lessons every day. They may be too young to realize this, but as their parents believe, education may be the only way for them to overcome the uncertainties and struggles of living as refugees. This hut barely keeps the heat and rain out. But it's the best their local teacher, Muhammad Ismail, can do for them by his own limited means. लेकिन हमारे दिल में ऐसा है हमारे साथ जब तक रहे तब तक हम सिखाते भी जाऊंगा इंशाल्लाह हम भी सीखा है हम भी सीखते रहूंगा जिंदगी भर के लिए वो दूसरे को पूछाने चाहूंगा इंशाल्लाह इस्माइल स्टडीड एट ए मदरसा और एन इस्लामिक स्कूल इन बांग्लादेश एंड ही इज नाउ होपिंग टू इंप्रिंट सम ऑफ दैट नॉलेज ऑफ हिस्ट्री लिटरेचर एंड रिलीजियस स्टडीज ऑन हिज यंग स्टूडेंट्स According to official statistics, children and teenagers make up a good proportion of the Rohingya community in India. The United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, or UNHCR, says of more than 21,000 Rohingya refugees registered with them in India, about half are of school-going age. Most Rohingyas living in India fled Myanmar after facing intense persecution in the Buddhist-majority nation. Living as a stateless community in hundreds of rickety settlements like these across South Asia imposes many hardships and limitations on the Rohingyas. For example, they are not allowed to work in India because they are not considered legal residents. Schools like these cannot admit Rohingya refugees for the same reason. Private tuition is unaffordable for this community that barely scrapes enough together to survive. And all of this puts any sort of formal education out of reach for young refugees. Ismail's art and language classes help these children stay connected to their roots. But they are born in the age of the internet, technology and globalization which requires them to have a more well-rounded education for a fair shot at a better future. Which is why Ismail has robed in Muskan Sefi. She has graduated from a college in Delhi and teaches English and mathematics as a volunteer. If I don't study, there's no way to them. 
It's still just elementary education, but it could still get them just that much further, help them become more self-reliant and support for their parents, many of whom are illiterate. तो ये उनके साथ जाएं तो उनको समझा सके कि हाँ ये ये बोल रहे हैं पैसे में कोई मतलब पैसे कम या ज़्यादा ना दें एंड और ये अपने मैं चाहती हूँ कि आगे भी बढ़े ये यहाँ से वीडियो है ये भी कितना Just having access to teachers isn't enough though. The children also need books to read and paper to write on. With no money to purchase books, Ismail relies on e-books to teach the children. Having copies printed at a local shop can be cheaper than buying 50 textbooks for all his students. Charity groups can help out, but they can only do so much. Sometimes they donate books, notepads and pencils, but their support isn't steady. Without a proper system in place, the children's education is much like their lives, disorganized and difficult. Their classes usually run for four hours for five days a week, but often they can be roped in to help their parents out. Civil society groups say the larger Rohingya community has to step in at a time when host governments aren't ready to help educate them. So what we rather envision is a community verified based uh, curriculum that serves the community and also uh, does not clash with other uh, you know, existing syllabus. This education should give them at least a couple of things. Number one is giving back their own identity and also, uh, you know, uh, uh, maybe uplifting them from their poverty. But for a community that's fighting to survive each day, education may not even be the top priority. The police in northern India have arrested at least 74 Rohingya refugees in recent weeks, accusing them of illegally crossing the border. Similar arrests have also been made in the northeast, close to the India-Myanmar border. The refugees say first and foremost they want stability and security, which in and of itself could be an uphill battle. It's a fight for the present and for the future. Ismail and his group of young students are thinking beyond survival, of education, of a better quality of life, of a fighting chance at living a different life.